My first real exposure to investing into real assets was when I started investing in real estate. Now, I was fortunate. I started investing in real estate in 2011, which was at the bottom of the 2008 real estate cycle, which meant real estate prices were selling for dirt cheap. I didn't know they were selling for dirt cheap, they just were because I had no experience when it came to investing. I had no experience when it came to financial education. I didn't even know that you could invest in real estate until I started doing it in myself because I didn't know anybody investing in real estate. But the way that it works when you invest in real estate is you're going out and you're going to buy a property. Let's say a single family home. And now when you go out and buy this home, you're not buying this home to live in yourself. You are buying this home to rent out to somebody else. You're buying this home for the purposes of generating cash flow because now the goal is you buy this home, somebody else is going to live there, and then they're going to pay you rent every single month. And if you do this correctly, the rent that you're going to generate from this property should not only pay for your property taxes, your insurance, your maintenance, your management fees, and your vacancy costs, but it should also put some money in your pocket every single month. So now you own this property, not to live in yourself, but to have somebody else live there. And now this tenant is paying for your expenses. They should also be paying for your mortgage if you have a mortgage on this property and putting some money in your pocket every single month. That means now that this asset is paying you for owning it as opposed to the home that you live in, which you have to pay to own. Can you sell your home for a profit? Sure, but that's not guaranteed. Here, if you do it correctly, this home should be paying you every single month. When it comes to stocks, the way it works here is you have a number of companies in the world and the United States that when they go to a certain point, they're going to want to either A, get more publicity or B, get some more money or I guess liquidate their assets as well because now they can trade the shares of their company on the public markets. And so when a company gets big enough, they will consider doing what's called an IPO, an initial public offering. And what that means is that this company is now going to trade on the stock market. So now what you can do is instead of just going out and buying stuff on Amazon, instead of just going out and buying Apple products, instead of just going out and spending time on Google, you can own a piece of these companies. Now, I'm not recommending any of these companies, but what I'm saying is now you can shift your mindset from just being a consumer to being a producer. And what that means is now you own a piece of the companies where you are already spending your money or your time. And a simple way that you can do this, a simple way for you to start, is if you're gonna go out and spend a dollar at a company, spend a dime buying the company. If you're gonna go to Chipotle and spend a dollar, spend 10 cents buying a piece of the company. If you're gonna spend 10 bucks at wherever, Lululemon, I don't know if you can buy anything for 10 bucks at Lululemon, spend a dollar buying the company. Now, does this mean the company that you're buying is a great company? No, absolutely not. In fact, you will probably lose money at some point because investing has risks and you should always do your own due diligence and never blindly trust a random guy on YouTube. But the whole idea here is now you are starting to think like an investor. And the whole idea of thinking like an investor is instead of me going out and spending all my money and buying fake assets, I'm going to use my money to buy real assets. I'm going to use my money to own a piece of equity. I'm going to use my money to own a piece of the economy. But that means you have to start thinking a little bit different. And as soon as you start investing your money, you're going to start changing the way you think because now you have your skin in the game. You have your own money in the game. And you don't want to see yourself lose money. Unfortunately, losing money is a part of the process. But when you invest your own money, that's when you're going to start getting more serious about paying attention to where it is that you're investing. Now you might say, but just, but I am not interested in researching companies. I'm not interested in studying financials. I'm not interested in reading profit and loss statements. I'm not interested in studying balance sheets. I'm not interested in studying cash flow statements. I don't want to do any of that. Well, you don't have to, because in the stock market, there are things called funds. Now there's a few different types of funds. I don't want to get too technical in this video, but you have things like ETFs, index funds and mutual funds. And all that means is that these funds will allow you to buy a piece of a lot of companies by just buying a piece of that fund. So now, for example, there are funds that will give you exposure to the S&P 500. The S&P 500 is a group of the 500 largest companies in the stock market. Now, instead of you going out and trying to find the best companies, you could just invest in the largest 500 companies in the stock market. There are funds that will give you exposure to the entire stock market. We've seen the stock market grow over the last century. But many times people will go out and try to invest in the best company and see that company go bankrupt or see that company go down and wonder why they keep losing their money. Well, if you don't know how to invest, if you don't know how to research, if you don't want to do that work, 
you can just invest in funds that will give you exposure to the total stock market. There are funds that will give you exposure to technology companies. There are funds that will give you exposure to AI companies. There are funds that will give you exposure to healthcare companies. There are funds that will give you exposure to international companies. There are funds that will give you exposure to dividend paying companies. I mean, you have funds for everything. And so now, instead of you trying to go out and find the perfect company, one other thing that you could also consider doing, if it's right for you, is even potentially invest in funds that where you just own a piece of the economy without having to do all the work because the reality is if you want to succeed as an investor, you got to be willing to put in some work to actually research what it is that you're putting your money into. Otherwise, it's almost like gambling. Option number three is business. Now, this can be your own business or buying somebody else's business. If you're going to buy somebody else's business, it's going to take the most time and the most money. If you're going to build your own business, well, that takes the most time. And then as you start to grow the business, you're going to want to reinvest your own business's money back into the business. Now, this one is the most difficult and has the highest barrier to entry. I mean, you can start investing in stocks with as little as $100 or $10, even $1 for some apps. Now, investing in real estate takes more money than investing in stock. You would need at least somewhere between $30,000 to $50,000 to get started as a real estate investor. I mean, could you start investing with less? I'm sure you could. But if you want to be able to start comfortably, I would say you need at least thirty dollars to $50,000 to start investing in real estate. To go out and build a business, you don't need a ton of money to start but you're going to need time and you're going to have to be willing to take risks and you're going to have to be willing to dedicate yourself to building a business. I can tell you from experience building briefs media that building a business, unlike what a lot of people say on the internet, it's not something that you can do just here and there if you want to see real success with that business. I mean, sure, if you want to just build a side hustle, you could do that. But if you really want to build a real multi-million dollar business, if you want to build a real sustainable business, it takes time. It takes hard work. It takes risk. Now, does that mean it's impossible? No, absolutely not. Anybody can actually do it, but it takes a lot of effort, which most people are not willing to put in. And that means you got to be willing to learn. So now the whole idea here is you're going to produce an income production machine. You're going to create this income production machine. Here in real estate, you're buying this income producing machine. Here with stocks, you're buying the income producing machine. Right? The income producing machine here is that home that you're buying. That home is going to produce income. You just got to get somebody to live there and pay you rent. And you can have a property management company help you with that. With stocks, you're buying a piece of the income producing machines that already exist. Here, you're creating the income producing machine or you're going to have to buy out one of these income producing machines. Now, I recommend entrepreneurship to anybody who's willing to put in the work, to anybody who wants to do that, but anybody who doesn't want to be an entrepreneur, anybody who doesn't want to put in the effort, anybody who doesn't want to put in the hard work, anybody who wants an easy lifestyle, I do not recommend entrepreneurship for you. So this one is really you know, up to you. There's nothing wrong with being an employee. There's nothing wrong with being an entrepreneur. I love entrepreneurship just because that's the way that my brain works. But if that's not how your brain works, then don't go down this route. However, this has been one of the most time-tested and proven ways for people to build wealth. But if you can't do this, then you can do this and this as a way now for you to invest in other income-producing machines. But the key is now, if you want to build wealth, you have to stop just buying the fake assets and start buying real assets. Because if you were ever to stop making money, if you were to ever stop working, would your fake assets continue to pay you? or would your real assets continue to pay you? If you enjoyed this short clip from my longer videos, here's another clip that I think you'll love and while you're at it, if you're interested in learning more about how to start generating passive income, our team put together an amazing guide on how to start generating passive income for free. All you gotta do is click that button right over there. Thank you for watching and as always, keep hustling. <laughs>